Just so you're aware, councillors, uh, Neil Brown is in the public gallery. Yeah, I've just noticed yeah. that. Okay, so um, let's start this meeting. It's quarter past. People are going to have to bear with me because I've actually downloaded everything onto my computer and I, it seems as though I'm moving in and out of reception. So, right, okay, so welcome to Brixworth Parish Council 24th of September full council meeting. Um, there are no fire regs to go through because it's a virtual, a virtual meeting. Okay, um, agenda item number two, apologies for absence and acceptance for any apologies. Peter, is it just the same as before? It, it's the same, but uh, just for the purpose of recording, I will go, go through this. Uh, Councillor Stephen James, uh, holiday. Councillor Tom Mitchell, family commitments. Councillor Kevin Parker, Damdu District Council commitments. And Councillor Francis Peacock, uh, work commitments. Okay, can I have a proposal that we accept those absences? Oh, wrong one. Who's proposing? Up, post. Thank you, Elaine. Seconded? Oh, second. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Is it just me? But is there an echo? There is an echo. There is a horrible echo. Uh, I think, Chairman, people haven't got mute on and it's retransmitting. Um, no, in, in previous meetings I've never had mute on and it's and it hasn't uh, it hasn't done that. If pe if everyone does want to put their uh, it's, it's, audio on mute stopped. to see if it makes any, any difference. Go it's gone. It's just gone. Oh, it's gone now. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Right, agenda item number two. Right, so we've got uh, minutes of the August meeting. So we've got declarations of interest first, Chair. Sorry. Through. Right, I am going to go on my phone. I am tired of this now. Boring. Let me... This is technology trying to be too clever. Bear with me. Right, Peter, I'm struggling with my phone as well. Could you do you mind pulling up the agenda for me? Okay, right. Right, number three, declarations of interest. Do any of um, do any councillors need to declare anything? No, no, no. Put that down as none. Right, uh, number four, agree, agree, and sign the minutes of the previous meeting. Has everyone read the August meeting minutes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any comment? No. No. Right. Can I have a proposer, please? I propose I'll second Jackie. it, Lynn. <laughs> Sorry, Lynn. That's all right. <laughs> Jackie proposing, Lynn is seconding it. Yeah. Okay. Item number five, public open forum session. Uh, so I believe that we've got a member of the public... Uh, wishing to to speak, and we've also got um, the centre's manager wishing to to comment as well. Is that right? Yes, please. Okay. So, Mike, would you like to go first? Just thought I'd update people with our uh, plans for Remembrance Sunday, the um, Sunday the eighth of November. Obviously, because of the current restrictions, we can't have anything like what we've had over the last few years. So what we're proposing as an alternative, uh, both churches have uh, agreed to this, is that uh, we have a gathering of representatives, but representatives only um, from the uniformed organisations, so they would um, uh, appear with a flag, for example, and a wreath bearer um, from the Cubs, Scouts, Brownies, Guides, people like that. Um, the Parish Council will be invited to 
send a representative with a wreath and other organisations like the fire brigade that normally uh, present their wreaths. So we're talking about 20 people um, assembling at the centre and a procession of 20 rather than 200 so we can socially distance them over a two metres distance um, to walk the normal route. Now we'd advertise to the public that if they wanted to attend, the options were either to line the route at a socially distanced place, slot or to go straight to the church um, memorial um, area and they could be socially distanced there. There would be no inside service in the church because we have too many, we couldn't socially distance. We would simply gather around the war memorial. We'd say the traditional words of dedication, the um, music for the last post would be sounded the flags would be dipped in salute, the um, wreaths would be presented from the organisations and the usual words would be said. So instead of a, a service inside, which lasts normally about half hour and 20 minutes or so outside, the whole thing would probably be about 15 or 20 minutes all outside, all socially distanced. That's what we are proposing um, if you're happy with that, I'll go ahead and liaise as I normally do with the British Legion reps uh, and the police because we'll need to do a rolling road uh, closure like we normally do with the uh, support of the police and uh, usual road stewards. That's what I'm proposing anyway. Uh, I'm assuming that you're going to be in contact with the church with regards to... Um Socially, making sure that people are socially distanced around oh, the monument. Oh, we already have. We, the, the, the two churches have already spoken. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone got any uh, any comments? Oh, sorry, Mike. No. Who's the who's the organizer? Is it the church? Sorry. Who's who's organizing it? Who fills the forms in? Is it the church? It's not a parish council event, is it? No, I'm just telling you. I normally do it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if anybody's got any questions okay. or queries, it's to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. Uh, yeah. I've got one. Yeah. Lynn. Sorry. Just, Mike, I thought we there was a maximum of six allowed. No. And there's six rules. No. There would be about, I, my reckoning, there would be about 20 people walking socially distanced. I think it's because it okay. because it's it's outside, doesn't it? Isn't it something like it falls within the remit of sort of funerals and weddings or something like that? Well, no, well it's, it's church services. It's a church yeah. service; they're exempt. Ah, that's what I didn't know. Yeah. yeah, it's a remembrance service, and it's exempt. Okay, fine. Okay, is everybody happy with that? Then I, I go ahead. I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank. Thank you um, again, Mike, for organising that. Okay. The, the wreaths will be through the British Legion, like they normally are, for all yeah. organisations. Um, then. Okay. So um, that's that's what I propose to do. The other two things I just want to quickly mention are bulb planting. I don't know whether it's on your agenda or what you're doing about it. And the food share scheme. We hope to start uh, Wednesday of next week. Okay. Okay, I'll leave yeah, you to it. Writing that down starts next week. Yeah, fine. Thank That's you very great. Much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Right, um, got Neil Brown who wishes to talk. Neil, I'm only here to observe the comments on item fourteen. Okay, Sandra, can I can yeah. I propose that we bring item fourteen forward? If, if he's only here, if Mr. Brown's only here for that item. Neil, do you wish oh, to I'll stay for the rest um, bring it forward? Are you quite happy to listen to all of us for the I next? I enjoy hearing the whole thing. That's fine, then. That's fine. Right, so... Um, I... Chairman, before we move on, can we authorise the expenditure for the wreath? Has this... Well, doesn't um, Mike... I, I, I usually do. It's normally an item out of the chairman's allowance. Yeah. And it's a section 137. 
and it's usually it's it's not a purchase it's a donation and yeah. it's 20 it's normally 25 pounds i can normally do that on behalf of the council but and put it in for next month on the payments list mm. which will be october which will still be before the uh the expenditure goes out I mean, that's that's how we've done it for the last few years, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thanks for the reminder, Casper. I mean, I, I will put it on the next for next month. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, paper B, finance, consider the financial transactions and authorise the payments for September 2020. Okay. I'm going to flip out of here and have a look at those payments there for September 2020. Uh, Peter, is there anything here that you feel that you need to point out? Uh, no, I don't think there is. I think they're all f fairly... I'm just having a very quick look. There's a few COVID items earlier on, uh, and there's a few annual items crept through. But apart from that, uh, the, grant, benign, for, the grant for the food scheme uh, goes out as well this week. But everything else is fairly straightforward. Okay. Has anyone got any comment? No. Okay. Um, paper, right, so item agenda 6.2, receive the report of the final... Sorry, Sandra, working I need a proposal in a second for the, oh, uh, I'm sorry. For the sorry, transactions. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, so can I have a proposal that we um, can authorise these payments? Yeah, I'm happy to propose. Thank you, Councillor Compton. Who was seconding that? I will. Thank you, Councillor Burke. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Right. Uh, 6.2, receive the report of the Finance Working Group and consider any actions. Paper C. Has everyone read this? Yeah. First draft, so, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary there, just working towards budgets for next year. Okay. Any comment from anyone? <clears throat> no? So, that's received. I need a proposal and a second, a chair, because there's a I've just recommendation. just received a report. No, it says consider any actions, and the recommendation oh, says oh, can sorry. we buy the money yeah. across. I, I just okay. need that in the minutes. Right. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I just read the receive the yeah. report bit. So, can I have a proposal for considering uh, the the recommendations, the actions? Yeah. Who's was that? You, Councillor Barrett. Yes, yes, I certainly approve of that. I should have a second audit. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor is that? Yes, Councillor Lynn Paul. That's great. Thank you very much. Right. Item 7.1. Receive the report of the personnel working group and consider any, any actions. Right, now this was a massive... I couldn't download it at all, so... Has, have people read this? Sorry, I was just going to, I'll just find the recommendations. Uh, yeah. I know. I, I, I have read it, and I thought the handbook was a bit heavy-handed. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even download it. it was um, so, it, and I'd like a bit more time, to be honest, because I don't feel that we've had enough time to consider it. We only had it, you know, very recently. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no? Yeah, I mean, obviously the personnel committee have considered it already. But if all members want to go through it in addition to that, that's, that's fine. Oh, are yeah. you happy with it then? Because I couldn't make the meeting because of work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fine then. I won't, I won't spend any more time on it. No, that's okay. I mean, if you, if you feel that you do want to have some time... No, no, it, no, no, don't worry. Uh, no, that's fine. If you've been through it, I'm happy. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone else um, read it? No? Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm just scrolling down the bottom. I don't know why, really, but I am because I've already read this. I think, Peter, you're actually very happy with Peninsula so far, aren't you? Yes, the fill and all the fill and all the gaps. Yeah, they're, they're very good value. Uh, but obviously, we'll get the most out of them at the beginning when we're getting everything in order, and then after yeah. everything's in order. Uh, well, it's almost just an insurance policy for anything that goes wrong and any ongoing advice. But at the moment, we're yeah. get, certainly getting a lot out of it. Okay. Right. So, can I have a proposal that we accept uh, this document? Have I got anyone? Councillor yeah. Bird. And uh, can I have a seconder, please? Can't see any hands for a seconder. Okay, I'll put my hand up then to accept this. Okay. Uh, we need to check that out to unanimous chair, I would suggest. Yeah. Right, have I got anyone... Um, against this. No? Any abstentions? No? Oh, yes. I'll, I'll abstain. I'll okay, abstain. In. And Councillor Barrett abstaining, yeah? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 7.2. Right, to note the revised salaries and holiday allocation. <clears throat> Does pe have people read this? Yeah, it's all in order. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And it's backdated to the 1st of April. I think that's fairly standard, isn't it? To just it backdate yes. stuff that's, like this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I just thought I'd make the point because it... Yeah. Yeah. Council Park okay. has just arrived. Mm -hmm. Oh, he had? He's disappeared. Okay. Oh, yes, he should be here now. Yes. Peter, there's nothing to propose here, is there? I'm just noting it. Uh, I didn't have a proposal in a second to accept the revised salaries. OK, so why doesn't it say that on the <laughs> it, agenda? Well, there's actually a debate on the clerks forum this week on whether the council should note it or whether it should agree it because really yeah. it's a national agreement so you haven't got much choice but it's equally no. but equally you should still approve it because we're changing uh people's contracts people's rates of pay well that, that's that's what was confusing me because yeah. i'm thinking it says note here but actually yeah. it, 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 there is an action yes yeah as i say it's right, been debated okay. this week on a, on a forum and there's no conclusion Right, OK. So can I have a proposal uh, for um, accepting the revised salaries and holiday allocation, please? Okay, Lynn, I'll thank you. Propose it, yeah. Uh, can I have a seconder, please? Uh, thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Can, uh, right, those four? Yeah. Uh, anyone against? Sorry, can I have people saying if they're against... No. Any abstentions? No? So, everyone happy with that? Thank you. Yeah. Right, 7.3. Consider implementing the recently revised home working allowance for the clerk. This has just been revised by HMRC. Uh, I, I, don't, I'm, I, I don't think it's compulsory, it's just... Everybody tends to keep in step with what HMRC recommend. I'll propose that. I was going to say, so again, this, this is something that needs to be uh, proposed and seconded, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, if we can move on to a proposal, which was Lynn. Yeah. Can I have a seconder, please? I'm happy. Oh, Thank okay. you, Elaine. Uh, um, 
for those uh, um, hands up who are uh, for this. Thank you. Anyone against? Um, any abstentions? So I think that was everyone for, wasn't it, yeah, Peter? It was, yes, thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, item 8, Retail Working Group. 8.1, receive a report from the Retail Working Group and consider any actions. Has everyone had a chance to, um, to read this? Yes. Yep. 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 Any comments? Not a lot to say, really, is there? <laughs> no. No. But, I mean, basically, the, um, the their main point of contact is uh, is Jonathan, mm. and this this is literally just um, just a report now. Um, it's almost as though the parish council is not uh, actively involved. Unless um, unless Jonathan's involved, um, Ian. Yeah, I've had a message from Jonathan that um, I may be telling information you know anyway, but the inspector mm. and the date of his visit is known. It's week commencing twelfth of October. We're trying to find out the exact date. Right. So. <coughs> Last time we had an inspector come down, it was with regards to the Chinese extension and people were invited to meet with the inspector, weren't they? So how do how do we want to approach this? Because we don't want it to be um, like a, a, a lynching, do we? <laughs> In that, you know, sort of just having having sort of too many people expressing an, an, an opinion. What do you think, Councillor Barrett? Mm. Uh, there's many ways of looking at it. I tend to think the more the merrier. But, uh, you know, it's a uh, matter is that he wants to go here into argument and to answer his questions. He won't want to chat. Mm. OK. Right. Nothing to propose or second with this item, is there, uh, Peter? No, no, it's just, just to note the report that we're awaiting yeah. the inspector's uh, decision. That's fine. Mm. Right. Um... Item 9.1, receive a report from the sports working group and consider any actions. Has everyone read this? Yes. <clears throat> yep. yep. Um, wasn't Simon Colton going to join possibly this meeting? Lynn? I wouldn't know that, would I? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, I thought he was here. Yes, uh, sorry, am, he, he's at the uh, bottom. Uh, yes, he is there. I am here. Uh, I didn't realise it was to discuss this topic, but um, I'm happy if there's any comments to be made. Um, this is the, 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 the information with regards to the uh, terms of the working group, Sandra, isn't it? Yeah, um, Peter, can you just um, can you pull up that report, please? Yes, certainly, yeah. Terms of reference. Yeah. It's a terms of reference for approval that we that we discussed, and then obviously yeah. the notes of the meeting and our work, the way forward. Yeah, uh, I mean I've read them, Sandra. Obviously, Are you I'm not. Happy? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean there's a, there's a comment that's made right towards the end, which mentions the chairman and the parish clerk will organise the agenda for the following meeting. But I would have thought that would have come from the working group itself as we discussed at the previous meeting that we would generate the uh the discussion well i'm topic. assuming so, sorry sam i'm assuming that uh, when they say the chair the chairman they mean the chairman of the the so-called chairman of the working group lovely okay not, yeah not the yeah. chairman of the of the full council and That's i think fine. what we would be doing is is putting a message out to um, uh, to everyone saying, is there anything that you want to discuss in particular? I think we also agreed that we would have um, standard agenda items, even if there's nothing to discuss, just so to make just to make sure that nothing falls um, under the radar. Yeah. So if we if we have a template almost for for, for our agendas, and then we can. Um, um, add stuff to to that if it's not a standard issue to be uh, to be discussed. Yeah, stuff like you know maintenance would always be on there. 
Yeah, and the only other one thing, it does suggest we're only having two meetings, but we did agree that for the first year we might end up having one or two more meetings to cover off topic. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think this is I think this is um, an ever evolving yeah. group, and I think we just all need to see um, how it works. And, and yeah, if we have to call uh, an emergency meeting, we have to call an emergency meeting. Um, Ian, what was your recollection of that meeting? Long lines, like you said. Um, mm, I certainly would agree that uh, I agree we do need rather more than two meetings a year. I think yeah. that was a minimum of two meetings. I think a minimum. Said. Yes, a yes. minimum. I'll be happy to have a minimum. Yeah. 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 Could could I just propose then that we accept the terms of reference, but with that amendment to just make it clear that the agenda is is going to be sort of set by the chairman of the working group and and the not the chair of the council. Yeah, because yeah. it's not quite yeah. clear. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay, just writing that down as well. That's that's fine. So, Lynn, you're proposing. Yeah. Have I got Have I got a seconder? I'll second it. Thank you, Elaine. Oh, sorry. I saw Elaine's hand, but I heard Lena's voice. Lena, I'll I'll choose you. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, item ten point one. Consider the NCC consultation on the. Pro oh no, we had a proposal. Hands up for the proposal. Yeah. Anyone against? Any abstentions? So that's everyone for, is it? Thank you. I can't see people's hands. And also, I, there are some of these I, that I can't actually see people's faces. So I'm going to have to repeat myself at the very end to make sure that everyone is in agreement with a proposal. Sandra, can I perhaps suggest you just ask if there are any objections and abstains? Because then the rest of it we can assume have agreed. Peter, is that, is that no, that's um, absolutely okay fine. Stuart? Yes. Okay. Fine. Well, thank you, Stuart. Okay. Uh, right, 10.1, consider the NCC consultation on the provision of electric vehicle only bays within Bricksworth. Can you pull that, um, that paper up, please? Has everyone read this? Yeah. yeah. Has anyone got anything to say? Yes, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, I would certainly object, uh, not in principle, I'm certainly very in favour of these electric charging points, but the site they're choosing on Spratton Road does worry me. Yeah. Um, they're going to take away two parking bays from the existing lay-by, which is going mm. to exacerbate in the short term the parking problems even more, because there won't be electric cars charging there uh, continuously, I would think. My suggestion is, with the cooperation of the county council, if we could offer them uh, two bays at the front of the library car park, and therefore it won't add to the congestion outside the shops. And there's often spare space in that car park, and if security was a problem in the evenings, the gates could be moved backwards slightly to leave two places um, unlocked so they could be used 24-7. The gates aren't locked um, anyway. Um, and at the moment. Do you, do you think that they may be locked in the future? The notice says they are locked when the library is closed. But practice has been they're not. But I don't no. think you can rely on that. Well, I'm, I met up with the library manager uh, yesterday about other, um, other stuff, and it all seems a bit weird. But, um, Lynn? I don't think the... Um, Electric bays are dedicated for electric cars. They certainly aren't in Milton Keynes. Anyone, can, if there's no electric car parked in there, you can park in it in that bay. Oh. So, so it shouldn't exacerbate the problem. 
Well, we know that for sure because they've got electric um, bays outside um, the Durngate Theatre, haven't they? They're not. They're, they are. They are electric bays. But other cars can park in them if there's nowhere to park. Usually, whether that is the case for this, yeah, it's not clear to me. There's a traffic regulation order which suggests there's going to be some sort of enforcement. Unless I'm mistaken. It is, it is a free-for-all there. The problem's going to be getting your car to charge it, because you'll never get there if it's not kept dedicated. Other shuttles will be in the way. That's a possibility, yeah. I think we need a bit more information. Yeah, I, I, I'm not comfortable that we make a decision tonight. Chair? Yeah. yeah. If, if you go to the the second one, right. which is, it it, uh, it might say help everybody. It actually points where the bays are going to be. I think there's some mention about parking and things like that. Peter? What's what's the what's the second one, Kevin? Is that the web link? Yeah, I think it's the survey, if I remember rightly. I might be wrong. Well, one of these, the electric vehicles web page, or do you mean this? Yeah, one? just um, did that one. Just go to that one. I think that's the one I looked at. Then click oh, on there. We go. And then keep going. Stop. Stop. Bye. Uh, well done. Thanks. Ah. And there uh, is the other two. That's right. The remaining two bays being available to both vehicles. Yeah. So, the, it so, be dedicated. so there's two dedicated and two not. No. Is that right? Please, uh, two of the bays will be dedicated to electric charging only. The remaining oh, two the remaining for both. two will be for both, okay. So, so there'll be four spaces, two for electric and two for any vehicle. Mm. And then the, the other one is two dedicated. Okay, I mean, the thing is, is that we are going down this route, aren't we? So, is it not just delaying the uh, inevitable? I don't, I don't think Chairman and I would be saying we want to delay it at all. Simply improve it and make it better for everybody. All I'm suggesting is you move them over the road. Okay. Well, why don't we have a conversation with the library manager... Which we have uh, done, Sandra, haven't we? Sorry? Haven't we already asked if we can use that car park? We've been told it's for library use no, only. No, what, what it was is that I, um, we finally um, had a meeting. It's taken um, Ian Boys and myself um, since February to arrange a meeting with the, uh, the library manager. And it was with regards to um, making, it, uh, making it very clear that people can park um, in, the, um, in the library car park. So just putting up additional um, additional signage, and um, an NCC came back and went, no, that that library is for the patrons of the library. It is not for shoppers. Mm. I mean, we could say. I mean, so if you sort of, if you extended that logic, they they would say no to having the electrical points there because they will say well that not they're not necessarily for the patrons of the library but equally does it do any harm asking the question well chairman i don't think it's for us to seek permission from the library it's us to make a suggestion to the county council and they'll carry it forward mm. or the consultees whoever they are yeah, I guess county council part of it. Yeah. Well, no, we're asking permission from the library. Via, yeah, you go, you go, you have a chat with your li local librarian, don't you? 
so that she feels um, included in the decision. And, but she will just defer it to Northampton County Council. All, all I'm saying is that I just think it's polite to, to suggest to Sheila, uh, this is what we are considering. Uh, and we will be talking to um, to Northampton County Council. I can't see anything wrong with keeping her in the loop. No, that's fine. I'd, I'd have to go that far. Yeah. Yeah. So, Peter. Yeah. Are you are you um, happy to send an email to uh, to the library uh, to the librarian or? Yeah. 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 And okay, in terms of responding you. to the consultation, do mm. we just say we're happy with the we're happy with we're the happy initiative? With the we're happy with the initiative. We're happy with Northampton Road, but Spratton Road we think we should be relocated to the library. Yeah, is that what we're mm. saying? Yeah. Okay. Do I need a proposal for that? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did so can I have a proposal? You made the proposal, didn't you? Uh, it was a bit sloppy. Well, it was, it was a proposal, though. And I'm happy to okay. second your proposal. Thank you, Lynn. Right. right. Um, moving on to um, item 11, section 106 projects, 11.1. Receive an update on the section 106 project and consider any actions right okay so this is stuff that's come back from daventry and their requirements have people read this in all seriousness have people yeah. actually read this document okay yeah. i can't see everyone so you're gonna have to shout if you need to um if you want to have a um um a conversation lynn oh, yes i would just like to ask peter it mentions a couple of times consultation Mm. What level of the consul what level of consultation are they asking for? <clears throat> Sorry, I, I I've mentioned the need to consult. I mean they've asked us uh already about consultation on, in a telephone conversation and I said to them we would carry that out at, at the right time. <coughs> but by the looks of it, if they want us to come up with a scheme up front, therefore we're gonna to have to do have to do our consultation now. Yeah. Uh, I've got, uh, as evidence of what we actually need uh, that's what they're after I think is a trail yeah and if you want I, I don't know how council feels about this but there are companies out there that would do the consultation for you because it's okay doing a consultation but you need really some impartiality on the um, analysis of the results yeah yeah and, 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 and the school's an obvious one to tap into uh, anywhere for playground equipment Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's a few companies out there that do it that I've looked up. And the money could come out of the Section 106 money. I did a consultation recently and it, it cost just over £1,000, which... Yeah. Okay. Not too the, bad. the the other the other way of of um, I can't see if anyone wants to, um, to to talk, but the other the other way of of doing it, which is when I've spoken to other um, um, clerks about uh, about this, is that they've actually um, they've actually done the consultation themselves. So what they what they've done is that once they once they've gone gone down got down to their um, two or three. Um, manufacturers of of Moogers and play equipment is that those manufacturers have come up with their proposals. They've then gone out to schools, for example, and they've got the feedback from those schools. And so they've gone. So you know, school, of, you know, Brixwood Primary School have said, well, we like these elements of A, we like these elements of B, and we like these elements of C. That sort of um, just rejigs the um, the brief a bit, uh, and so, so from what I understand from um, uh, from clerks, because several clerks have said that is what they did, is that this is what um, these uh, Mooga companies or, or which whoever are are used to. They are used to having to go into consultation, and it is what they would expect. So in, in, in a sense, then, we don't need to spend any money on specialist consultations doing a job that the Mooga company would be doing 
as part of their part of their pitch that they wouldn't charge us they would be hoping to 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 win the bid anyone else no i'm i'm happy with that approach if that's what they if that's what they said they'll do that yeah. sounds great yeah so that's information that I've got from other uh, from other clerks anyway. So and then um, I've obviously uh, been in contact with Compan who've who've done their proposal uh, to us and and yeah, it is something that they that they've done. It's it's just part of it's part of the whole tendering process is uh, is community involvement and feedback. Okay. So, what we've got here then is the uh, the bowls club application. No club, no issues raised to date. So then we've got the cricket. Yeah. So this, the application cannot progress without a long term lease being renewed for this site. This could be progressed on the existing terms and conditions. Right. We will need to consider this matter. A task and finish group con consisting of councillors James Compton Co was set up to review the central sports lease and this group could be used for this matter so the sticking point here is the lease isn't it yeah yeah and, and i don't think it's it it doesn't need any radical changes i don't believe it just needs the uh dates changing really but that's up to the councillors to look at and discuss but there's nothing controversial in there i don't think no but also the 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 stuff that they were requesting was for St David's, not for the Dallas Burston site. No, the, the, sorry, the, the 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 lease they've got a lease. I think it's a five year lease for the cricket wicket. Are you talking about the lease between the parish, parish council? council? Yes. Oh right. Okay. Yes. Okay. My my head was in the lease that they lack at Dallas Burston's no. grounds. That's Okay. Yeah, it's just that's a re okay, it's just so a renewal. Yeah. Okay. So that's something then that councillors James Compton and Co can um um deal with. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. We need to organize a meeting. Yeah. 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 Well, we might may have a meeting to deal with several of these of these things. So that's fine. So then the community center application further information is required. The wording makes it clear that the contribution must be used to fund the provision and or enhancement to indoor youth and adult. OK, therefore, DDC will need full details of the anticipated works, including. Yeah, that's 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 fine. I, I don't think there's anything uh, unreasonable um, about that. And I think that actually links into our next conversation about specialist services, doesn't it? So can we park that for now? And then St. David's Mooga and Associated Landscaped Area. Uh, need quotes for the works to be undertaken. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, again, that, um, that leads into the, um, uh, the specialist services. So we'll, we can park that one. Yeah, and, and there may be consultation within the planning system if, if we do need planning permission, which, yeah. which isn't definite yet. I think yeah. that's only a maybe. Yeah, so recommendation, yeah. consider its next actions. Uh, renew the lease. Consider how best can progress to the next stage. Progress to the next stage. Right, so can I have a proposer for these recommendations then, please? I can't see anyone's hands because I can't actually see anyone. Can people shout? Well, it, is anyone against? I'll go with Stu, with Stuart's suggestion. Is anyone against these recommendations? There's no. Lynn, sorry. Sorry, there's not really a recommendation. It's it's asking us to decide how best to progress. Is it not saying recommendation? Yeah, the, the recommendation is that the parish council consider how we're going to move it to the next stages. Yeah. I mean, you've agreed item one is that yeah. we'll get we'll get the task and finish group to bring a report back to the next meeting on the legal agreement. Mm. Items two and three, they're slightly more complicated because uh, 
will obviously need detailed drawings and design specs and whatever. But yeah, if you yeah. but if you want to wrap that up in the next item, yeah, because it's probably one of the same. But basically, yeah. it's getting the the. the people with the skills to, to put the report together, the spec, and yeah. a community centre will probably obviously need uh, detailed drones for builders or whatever to price up. Yeah. So, it, yeah, that's that's the only way forward, really, for, for both mm -hmm. of them now. Right, so there's no proposal on on this then? Well, I, item one's a proposal for that task and finish yeah. group, and items two and three... We just need to decide how we're going to progress it. Which we're going to link into the next... It probably links uh, so into the next one anyway, yes. Yeah. Next yeah. item, yeah. So yeah. so can I, just, can I just have a proposal for the first item, and that is, is that councillors um, Compton, Co and James... Sorry. Uh, look, ...look at uh, the extension of that, of that lease so it, um, it satisfies uh, Daventry District Council's... Um, requirements yeah That's i'll my... propose that i'll second it second that i'll propose it you've seconded yeah. it thank you lynn okay right and just to check is, is nobody is anybody against that or yeah any I'm, just, I'm just thinking right oh, so, so, yeah. so, so, right so anyone against that any abstentions Okay, so all for it then. Okay, thank you. Right, eleven point two. Consider specialist support for the section one oh six projects. Right, this is very unusual uh, that this should be written on a uh, on an agenda. The chairman has asked that the matter be deferred uh, until the meeting of the 29th of October. I've never in my years of being a parish councillor have ever seen um, some someone write that down on an agenda. If someone is absent, they're absent. And I'm really, really sorry, but um, that's just my opinion. So I think we need to have a vote on whether we want to um, uh, defer this, this item. Um, or, well, have you uh, got a seconder for the proposal, first of all? I'm proposing... It, um, it's a proposal, you need a seconder for it. Yeah, but the, the, the proposal is... me. I was about to propose whether or not we were going to defer item 11.2. And then I was going to ask for a seconder. Or have I misunderstood you, Lynn? Yeah, no, 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 that's right. I, I, yeah. Okay. No, you say, Lynn. Are you, are you proposing it then that we are de that we defer it? I suppose what I'm asking is, yeah, th th this this has got to be a democratic decision as to whether or not we we defer uh, this particular agenda item, isn't it? Yeah. And so that so that democratic process is done through a proposal. And so, therefore, okay, Jackie, what what are you saying? Can I propose that we don't defer it? I second that. Okay. Right. Anyone against? Yeah. If I could speak, I have a question. If I could, please, Chairman. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is um, is Councillor Bird's document you gave us to do with this item? Yeah. Well, I've not had a chance to read 37 pages in an hour. So, I've therefore, I would ask it be deferred. I would oppose the motion. Uh, ja ja uh, Jackie, do you, do you think that your documentation could actually be um, delivered um, verbally? I don't think it needs to be delivered verbally. It is a report. I was asked to send out the extra paperwork, but the actual query or the report says what, what it says. Is. Yeah. Okay. So, so the documentation so that you sent is just uh, <laughs> evidence of your report. Yeah. Okay. Um, has anyone else got any um, any comments? 
before we go ahead with um, Jackie's proposal. Okay, Lynn, um, Jackie, could you just repeat your proposal for everyone, please? I propose that we don't defer this item. And seconder? Lynn, was you the seconder? Oh, yes. Yep. Okay. Right. All those in favour of not deferring this agenda item until October, can you put your hands up, please? Okay, so uh, there's there's Lynn, Jackie and Stuart and myself. Can I have all those against Jackie's proposal to, um, to not defer this? I've got Councillor Barrett and Kevin. That's two. Can I have abstentions, please? Lena. Right, Peter. I can't see everyone. Can What's you just? There? Can you just? Um, I'm fairly sure that's told. carried because there was four for for the motion, uh, two against, and one abstention. I'm not but, sure my vote was counted. No, I can't <laughs> see you, Elaine. Sh what should I go? Vote? Should I go round the table? Uh, yeah, if, if, you if can, we just say four just, or I four or against, that'd be fantastic. Uh, Councillor Barrett. <laughs> Against. Councillor Bird? Four. Councillor Elaine Cole? Against. Councillor Stewart Cole? Four. Councillor James Collier? Against. Councillor Lynn Compton? Lynn? Four. She's on mute, but she said four. Councillor Lena Howarth? Abstain. Abstain, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sandra Moxon? Uh, four. Councillor Kevin Parker? Against. Against. It's one, two, three. So that's four against. One, two, three, four. Four, four. And is it, there must be eight of us. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's the chairman's casting vote. Um, I'm going with Jackie's proposal that we do not defer this until the next meeting okay that's carried thank you right okay um does anyone want to start off this um uh, this this conversation about so we what we've got we've got special basically we've got and then Lynn I'm hand over to you we've got um, the the employment of specialist services versus um, the 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 employment of um, of, a, of framework one one five um, as supplied by ESPO or the equivalent um, the equivalent um, organisation that is what's on the um, that is the the crux of this um, this conversation so uh, Lynn can I hand over to you. Please, I have first. a lot to say. I just wanted to thank Councillor Bird for all her work on this um, and hopefully saving 17 odd thousand pounds. Um, and I'd like to propose that we use ESPO to do the, the S115 framework for the MUGA. Um, okay. Have I got, do you want to get a seconder for that proposal? I would second that. Okay, so um, all those for using um, ESPO framework 115. I got Lena, Jackie, Stuart, um, Elaine, Lynn, and myself. Um, all those against? Kevin. I can only see Kevin's hand. Um, Ian, I can't see James Collier. James, are you for or against? I was for. For, for. using ESPO Framework 115. Okay. Any Correct. abstentions? 
No abstentions. Peter, can you just um, uh, can you just do a head count on that, please? Because um, as I say, I can't well, see everyone. Should I go all the way around the table again? Uh, yes, for, please. For and against. If you just give me one yeah. second. Uh, so it's for the motion that the, the, the council proposes uh, to use ESPO's uh, framework agreement number S section. Uh, was it one one five? Yeah. Yeah. So, Councillor Barrett, for or against, please. Against. Councillor Bird. Four. Councillor Elaine Co. Four. Thank you. Councillor Stewart Co. Four. Councillor James Collier. Four. Councillor Lynn Compton. Four. Councillor Lena Howarth. Four. Thank you, Lena. Uh, Councillor Sandra Moxon. Four. Councillor Kevin Parker. Gaines. And that's it, Chair. So that's carried. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's that's carried. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, can I make a suggestion that we actually form a um, a working group? Um, because my understanding, with when I've spoken to other parish councils about this, is that essentially. They uh, they have put a, a working group together and um, and just gone just gone forth uh, uh, with it. Yeah. So um, we need three folks still, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what that's what the ESPO thing will will yeah. do for exactly. us. ESPO yeah. have, car have already carried out the risk assessments for all of these companies. So there's a list of 20, um, 20 companies who could supply what we are looking for in terms of the, um, the playgrounds and the multi-use games area. Yeah. We then need to decide whether we want to go, um, go out to six companies, 12 companies or, or 22 companies. But that's something that the working group um, can, can decide what they, what they want to do. Um, so... Peter, is it okay for me now to um, to form a working group? Um, if if, if that's the council's wishes, certainly yes. Yeah, just yeah. just to try and get this uh, try and get this uh, this moving. Uh, Councillor Barrett, thank you. Um, you know, when I think about working groups, I think it'd be very very useful. But what's the advantage of this being a working group when we're moving away from the principle of the whole council being involved in this tremendously important project? We have a group already involves everyone who wants to be on that group. Why suddenly are being fragmentary and uh, doing things apart from that group? Where's the openness? Well, it will be transparent because the working the the, the working group will um, report back to the uh, to, to to the full council. Mm -hmm. uh, the work the working group will be there to just. Um, you know, sort of push ahead with understanding what the um, what the f um, the framework is and what it can offer and what it can offer us. And um, I mean, obviously, when it comes to doing the um, uh, the, the brief and the tendering process, that will be a, um, a you know every councillor will be involved in that. This working group is to really make sure that we understand what's what's um, what needs to happen and to um, to ensure that this doesn't land on the shoulders of our clerk, who is already incredibly busy. Yeah. I'll still say, Chairman, with respect, this is something the whole council should be involved in. We're all elected representatives or appointed representatives to represent the people of the village. We've all got a view. We've all got our expertise. So, and expertise with respect isn't just the, um, just, uh, the, the regard of one or two people. The working, I haven't set a number on the working group. If I set up a working group now and I've got 13 people who want to be part of that working group, whoopee do. But, you know, equally, if I've got councillors there going, I don't want to be part of the working group, then they, do, they, can, they can step away. So my, 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 my next question is going to be, who would like to be part of this working group? Right, so I've got, uh, I've got Lynn, Councillor Barrett, Jackie... Lena, myself, would anyone else like to be part of this working group? No. Right, so can we, uh, so therefore, those people who don't want to be proactively involved in this working group can be assured that they will be kept informed as to the progress of this project. 
<laughs> Sorry, Chair, is this working group for all the Section 106 projects? Or just the MOOGA? No, because we've got working, community centre as well. This is the well. working group. This is the working group for the MOOGA and, the, and the, the playground equipment because the Framework 115 is very specifically for that. Oh, when it comes to the um, when it comes to the refurbishment of the top floor of the library, there isn't a framework for that. Now, that's not to stop us to um, inve investigating an alternative, and it could be. And I think Lynn, you've maybe mentioned this: is that we do need to actually have a um, a special service for that top floor. When I look through that, when I look through that that document, that 113 pages that Peter sent through, every single one, well, when I say every single one, there were two companies that, that, that have quoted, and I don't know where the third company details were, because we have three quotes from company A, B and C. I could only see two quotes. But both of those companies specialised in buildings. That is their bread and butter, not installing playground equipment and resurfacing an old tennis court. So it could be that actually we approach those people to refurb the top floor of the library, but not have anything to do with playground equipment and uh, and the and the MOOGA. There were separate quotes for the um, community. It was split out, yeah. wasn't it? So yeah, and I think we'd already in agreed in principle um, the the lower quote. For that it was about was it six thousand pounds? It was about six thousand. It was about six thousand yeah. pounds. But what I would like to do, um, because when I when I read through the the documents from Ridge and from um, GSS or whatever they were they were called, uh, I must say I was um, deeply unimpressed with what they were um, what they were offering, um, because. Um, there were a great deal of exclusions, including the design of the of the MOOGA. They said, "Well, that can uh, the MOOGA and the playground that can that can be done by the manufacturer." And, and I mean, I just held my hands up um, when I when I read that. So it's like, so what on earth are we paying for? So I think I would I would have caution again that if we are going to be spending six thousand pounds, what exactly? Are we getting the six thousand pounds? I would, and I think Tom also mentioned it in his email that there there was stuff there that um, didn't didn't quite ring, um, wasn't quite right. Can you bring up that email of um, of Tom Mitchell's, please, Peter? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Hang on a second. Mm. I'll just need to find it. Sorry, I'm just searching for it now. Whatever reason, I can't find it in my emails unless I've filed it away somewhere. I've pulled it up on my on my uh, computer. Have you, can you can you read out, sir? I can't see it. I've got everything but that one. Okay. Um, if I may, I'm slightly using the scope of professional services that are proposed of these projects. Not so much the cost, but have clarity of what we are getting for our money and the, uh, i stress that these are my thoughts and not a criticism of the hard work so far right some random comments regarding ymd 
Uh, they refer to concept design and generally the REBA workbook. I would like to see a full list of their actual deliverables, the full scope of what they are providing from concept design to stage three developed design, stage four technical design. Although they state stage four will be provided by the specialist contractors. Uh, two, will they develop the employer's requirements into the tender documentation? Three, no mention of CDM 2015. What are they advising in respect of this with regard to roles and responsibilities? Client, principal designer, designer and principal con uh, contractor. Um, health and safety file together with O&Ms, etc. What type or form of contract are they proposing? What advice have they given? NEC3 option A or what? Bearing in mind that there are is a contractor's design element in this. What is their advice? Um, has any guidance uh, been given to programme management? Have they or have we thought about this from a project point of view? Why mention planning and building regs? I would have thought these are permitted works, internal works to the community centre. Do we have an asbestos register? I assume by contract administration they are protecting the council to make interim payments against measured works completed or will an activity schedule be used? On-site clerk of works, really? Exclamation mark. Or will they make periodic visits by way of site inspections? Um, have any exclusions or assumptions been made that we need to consider? So my, my, my own notes with regards to, to that is that, um, I mean, I'm referencing the, the MOOGA and the play, the play area, is that Compan, um, because that's the company I've been talking to, and so therefore Harg and Wicksteed and the others, they all comply to CDM and risk assessment and method statement documents. And, and the architect would actually be approaching those manufacturers for this method statement. So we've got we've got this third person in the middle charging money when actually we just go directly. They're just they're acting as as a as a middle as a middle agent really. Um, I I felt that in the um, in the documents there were things like you know words such as you know reasonable visits. Well, that that's not clear enough for me. A reasonable visit. Well, how many is a reasonable visit? Two? Twenty? Yeah, stuff that, that, like that needs to be clarified. You know, end inspection. That's not being clarified. Who would be inspected by? It would, you know, they were very likely employ ROSPA to do that and, and charge a percentage on top when we as a parish council could employ ROSPA for 250 quid as opposed to 750 quid. Um... So yeah, that 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 that's my comments there. I just I just think that we need to be very very careful with what we are getting for our money, and I think we would need to nail it with uh, with them. Now maybe that's something that the working group can look into. I don't know, Lynn. What what's your what's your thought on this? I t I, I totally agree with you, and I think we should um, see if we can get Tom Councillor Mitchell on board to help and perhaps choose the company that we out of those three that's the that's not not necessarily the cheapest but perhaps gives us what we want mm. and then drill down into the detail yeah um, i mean that would for, be for me uh, yeah i mean for me i mean i uh, you know it's laughable when one of those people that peter's been um, corresponding with is an uh, an an what, an architect, technologist or something like that? And I'm thinking, well, Councillor Peacock is one of those. So we've got that skill set sitting with us on our council. We've got Councillor Mitchell, who is an architect. We have the skill set already. And I think we need to be using that skill set. I... I, I... I don't disagree with you, but I do think we need an independent mm. um, specialist consultant on this. But it needs to be the right person it and not an architect. Right, right. Because it does need to be the right company, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah because th these companies that have been brought forward are essentially architects. And they, 
So are they the, are they the specialists or would they simply be acting as an agent between us and the specialists? So actually, surely we need to find the specialist. And that's where I think you're coming in, Lynn, and saying we can ask Francis and we can ask Tom. Yeah. So is that we something need, that... We need, to, we need more advice. And I think on this one, you know, I, I absolutely agreed that we, we needed to press forward with the Mooga. But I think on this one, we yeah. need to do some more work before yeah. we pick the company. And there is no rush on this one because we haven't given... Uh, we haven't got enough evidence yet for the to get the Section 106 money. So... Yeah. Is this something that, I mean, obviously it was pretty easy for me to um, track down parish councils who had used the, uh, the ESPO framework 115. That was, that was, that was very, very easy. Uh, it's, been, it's been less easy for me to find a council that has had a building like our library re refurbished. Could you, um, Peter, um, put a message out on your clerk's forum? to see if they've done something similar to this. Yeah, we could do, but I, I've done the comparable with school halls, school halls that have been refurbished and they've turned right. them into little basketball courts with water, okay. with, with a climbing wall and pull-out wall bars mm. and, and then obviously the floor and whatever. So I, yeah. I, I've been comparing it more to sco what a lot of work does happens in schools rather than in village halls. But I could certainly put the word out just in case somebody has done yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is that at some point we will organise a um, a meeting of this um, of this working group. Is everyone yeah. happy with that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you very much. So do do I bring the community centre stuff back to council, and and then the the muga and the landscaping goes to the working group, then to council. think so yeah or, or and, could and you so bring I'm, the community stuff to the working group no it is it best that it goes to council first Council. yeah jackie oh i was going to say to council because it may need a different working group that yeah. People? yeah 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 so it's, someone it's, like the skill set of of tom and francis yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely agree okay yeah. thank Definitely. you Right. Are we ready to move on to Village Project 12.1? Consider an environmental improvement scheme for Holcott Road. Who brought this to, to the agenda? It's, it, it was deferred from the last meeting, Chair. Uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Mitchell went away and said he would come yeah. up with something for the councils to look at yeah. uh, I need to come up with a a scheme which I think I might have a plan here is this the one with all of the bollards yes it is yeah Yeah. yeah. perhaps it's that one Yeah. yes there we go so he's just suggesting uh, recycled bollards we've already talked about the refurbished bench in there uh, we know there's bulbs already planted there uh but it's really a lot of it's just to prevent car parking on the grass, and it'll make, environmentally it'll look quite nice as well. And then the other additional thing we said we would do is uh, wildflower seeding at the back of the bench. Okay, could you bring up um, agenda um, L? Uh, sorry, item L for me, please, Peter. If the council would like me to, to contact Councillor Mitchell and come up with a budget for the scheme, so mm. at the next meeting we can tell you uh, the financial impact on the council and whether we've got it in the budget or not. And obviously we need to agree who's going to deliver it, whether it's a local contractor or the parish council staff or somebody else. Right, so the recommendation on this is... 
Parish Council is asked to consider the Environmental Improvement Scheme. Yes, uh, uh, sorry, the additional... So we're waiting for... Sorry, Peter. Yeah, I was going to say the additional point is we'll probably need approval from the Highway Authority as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe so, and there's some services run under the green as well. So we just need yeah. to check that out to make sure there isn't a gas main or a, or, or, or electrical uh, cables running there. So there's no real proposal. Uh, sorry, Ian. Um, no, you can't. It's just, yeah, so, so there's no real proposal here because we've still got stuff to sort out, such as um, underground works from highways yes. and, uh, and a budget. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ian? It's kind of just my own um, curiosity. Yeah. The in front of the village hall is a vegetative common. Yeah. What about to the right of the driveway in? Is that also the common land? I don't. We seem to be you... paying attention to both bits, aren't we? So hang on a minute. So if I've got my back to the village right. hall. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm turning. You... Then I turn left. Yeah. And I've got the. Yeah, so where that white car is parked. That's the green, isn't it? That's the green. That's the registered common. That's the green. Yeah, that's, yeah. And Councillor Barrett's referring to... to a bit beyond uh, there. That bit. No, that's the green. That's, no, 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 that's no. That green. That bit. That bit. But aren't well closed. A bit to the left. Yeah. Where the cars are off. That's the it. That, that's oh, the, right. That Wait a minute. There. That bit there. No, that bit there belongs to highways. That's right. Highway Verge, yes. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. Why, what are you thinking? I just want to try and work out who we had to ask permission to do what. So obviously that's the county <laughs> council part, isn't it? Yeah. And we're presumably the registered owners of the common land. Yeah. Yes, we are. That's it, right. Yeah. I'm just getting your ownership sorted out in my mind. That's fine, thank you. Yeah. But are you, are you thinking that actually, even though that belongs to um, um, highways... Mm -hmm. that we could maybe include that in the tidying up of that area. Well, if you don't try, you don't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, I'm I'll, sure I'll that... go for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure with highways, um, as long as it doesn't come out of their budget, they don't really mind. Do you know what I mean? That's right. That's right. Right. If one can ride on the back of the other, we've got a lovely, yeah. lovely, part, of the, lovely part of the village then. Yeah. Okay. So, shall I speak to shall I speak to um, highways with regard to um, seeing if we can develop that area with their permission? Ask for license. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we just need to put a license application in. Mm. So okay. if 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 Tom does Tom need to change his drawing? Is that a bit yeah. of extra land that you talked about, Councillor Barrett, or? Yes, that's all really. Just to continue what he's done with the first bit of land to the second bit of land. Yeah. I mean, you get some objections possibly from local householders who use it as a car park at the moment, but I'm sure that could be overcome. Yeah. Mm. Well, they may object, but it doesn't. It's not their land to um, to object about, is it? Really. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Right, so there's no proposal. We've just got extra. We've just got additional um, bits and bobs to do on that one, haven't we? So this is more of receiving the report. Are we all happy to receive that report? And you'd like a further report on, on on the license and the budget and a final yeah. scheme to come back. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Next agenda item. <clears throat> Going up and down, up and down on my phone. Right. Emergency planning. Emergency planning. Consider joining the Community Flood Resilience Pathfinder Scheme. Uh, Elaine, are you part of the emergency planning thing? Uh, no, I went on some training and they talked about the the flood, the money for flood defences. Yeah. That was it. Uh, well, no, <laughs> but I know we're not we're not likely to be flooded. subject to floods. But there are certain resources that you can access uh, to review the, the needs of your area. Right. So let's have a look at this. Um, has everyone read this document? 
Yeah. I was quite surprised when they, they, they said the plan that Brixworth is likely flooding, but it's mainly surface water. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought we were miles from any rivers or anything. But it's... <coughs> Well, well, we have got rivers in the village, and they can sort of, um, you know, yeah. they can come up through the, um, yeah, through, through the, what do you call it, the metal things in the, the road. Bullies, they can yeah. come up through that. But that's that's more to do with um, the, the the clay pipes that um, need replacing, and also some of those um, uh, drainage things are just um, blocked with silt and mud and stuff like that. So I'm sure if someone walked along and just poked it through with a stick. That would release release a lot of the um, um, uh, the surface water. I, is there any harm in participating in this scheme? No, it's it's like anything. It's a bit like the uh, the team that monitors speed and whatever. You just need a lot of willing volunteers, uh, people that are willing to be trained, uh, have all the kit, and we probably need somewhere to store. At certain items as well, uh, but the benefit I think that the points out there we, we we get additional resource for flood monitoring, and we'd obviously be ready if if a flood actually came through um, flash I think, flooding. Yeah, I think for me it's a community, it's a community thing, and I do feel very strongly that Bricksworth needs to be working in partnership with other. Uh, yeah, with its neighbours. So even though we may not be um, the first to benefit from this, if we can help others out, then um, by yeah, even if it's just support, then then why not? What what do other councillors think? Fairly ambivalent. Yeah. Um... <laughs> What are we going to do with this item then? And we could ask the community if anybody wants to be a flood warden, if anyone's interested. Ian, do you want an extra hat? Do you want a do you want do you want a flood warden's hat to wear? I think it's someone who lives in a more central part of the village would be more beneficial. They're <laughs> more experienced, I think. Are they really? Especially if they live on a hill. Yeah. Charlotte, can I just? Ask, do we have any data yeah. on flooding in Bricksworth? I mean, it, you know, is this going to be ever an issue for us? Is it worth considering or not on that basis? We, are, we, are, I'm not aware of any data, and I think, you know, in all seriousness, when we do get, um, you know, we've all we've all seen uh, the rivers running through down Northampton Road, down Newlands, and down Kennel Terrace, but that is because. Yeah, the the underground um, pipes cannot cannot cope with that. It's not because we're next to um, next to a river. So uh, for no, me, but, I mean, have we had any properties flooded? It ha has there ever been an issue in 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 the sense of damage to properties? That yeah, yeah. I'm only I'm aware actually. You know, Spratton Road. So you got, um so it's the houses next to Spratton Road wreck. And they, they they are lower than the road itself. Opposite um, opposite St David's. I'm not very good with um, with road names, but you've, you've got David's a home road. on the corner. Yes, yeah, St David's Road. There's a cup. There's a, was it two or three houses which are below road level. They've be, they've been flooded in the past. Okay. Why? Well, what are you thinking, Stuart? Well, I'm, I'm not. And I'm just trying to establish the need for this. Um, it sounds as if there could be a need uh, mm. if, if there have been floods and you know, there have been damage to property. Um, it's for who now wishes to volunteer to, to take this on, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a councillor, though. That's what I was saying. We could put it out to the community and, and say if we could, you could, if you wanted to, become a volunteer on this scheme it doesn't like you don't always have to do the things we can facilitate other yeah. volunteers so why don't we put something out um via the media committee and put a message out there what what do you what do you think elaine yeah 
I think that's possibly a good idea, but I wonder if it's something, um, I think after what's happened, we may need to just review and do an emergency plan, look at the emergency planning again. Mm. And it might sort of come into there, which then does need to be kind of opened up to the wider community and possibly connected to the Good Neighbours Scheme or whatever. We did, because I did start having a working committee with a councillor that left, but we didn't we didn't get very far. So I don't particularly want to revisit it. I'm not volunteering, just to be really clear, I'm not volunteering to get on another committee and revisit it. I wonder if it's something we should perhaps put out on the media committee, see if anybody wants to get involved. But I think if we really want to look at it properly, it needs to be part of a wide review of the emergency plan, especially given that when I went on that emergency planning meeting and we talked about it with Peter at that point, a lot of the things then proved to be pretty irrelevant for the emergency that we've actually dealt with this time. I mean, we have, there are uh, several residents involved in this um, emergency plan. Yeah, you know, Lisa Daniels, even John, yeah, Jonathan Harris. I mean, maybe we need to be speaking with, um, uh, with, uh, with them. Yeah, that's the Good Neighbour Scheme. It's something... It's something different. It is mm. something that you would write on an emergency plan to say this is a group of people that could be contacted. So shall we shall we deal with this via the media committee then, Jackie? I I, I think media um, <clears throat> okay. is the first course call. That would be my view. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Let's let's do that then. So, um, is uh, let me just have a look. Consider joining. Right, Peter. Is there a proposal here, really, or not? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, we'll refer to the media committee because we think it's more of a community engagement yeah. issue rather than a direct action by the parish council. Okay. So um, I'll propose that we um, we 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 take this to be considered uh, by the uh, Media and Communications um, Committee. Have I got a seconder? Um, uh, Lena, thank you. <laughs> All of us. All of you? <laughs> as long as it's not me. Right, okay, so that's 13.1. Just write that down. Lena to Media Committee. Right, so 14, oh, poor Neil Brown has been sat there. So 14, the Ashway complaint, 14.1, consider a written complaint regarding overuse of the football pitches on the Ashway. Peter, can you just bring up the, uh, the correspondence, please? Yeah, if you just give me a minute. Uh... Thank you. Can everybody see that? Has everyone read this? Yeah. 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 Okay. Can I invite um, the residents to discuss this, please? And and then uh, if we've got any questions or indeed if we can answer any queries, then we then we can do that. Um, Neil? I, I don't have much to say that I haven't passed to the council already. My primary concern is the use of the uh, Ashway playing field by the uh, football club compared in relation to the contribution that they make to the maintenance of that. Based on the number, your uh, finance figures, the if you assumed, and I'm only assuming, that the total cost of maintenance of the two playing fields in the village is 41,000 for three years, and 40% of that could be attributed to the ash weight. That's an assumption, that's nothing more. That's 16,400 pounds over three years, an annual cost of 5,467. The uh, football club contribute 557 pounds per annum for the use of the ash weight. Based on their usage, and I have monitored it for the last three weeks, they, it's at least two hours per evening, Monday to Thursday, three hours in the morning on a Saturday and two hours in the afternoon, most Saturdays and Sundays. That's 18 hours a week. 
if you look base that over a whole year period, which I appreciate isn't because they don't use it all year round during the week, but I work out it's round about 10.14% of the cost is contributed by the football club. Therefore, the residents are contributing 90% of the cost of the playing field, the maintenance of the playing field, when they use less than 10% of it. I believe those percentages are the wrong way around. I'm not looking to reduce, to ask for the reduction in the amount of uh, use of it because it's activity within the village. I just think the football club should be contributing more to the cost. Thank you, Neil. Elaine? Um, well, Neil won't necessarily know this, but obviously we've now started the, the sports working... Well, we've not called it that. I forgot what we've called it. I'm really sorry. Liaison. On it. Sports Liaison Working Group to possibly address some of these issues about the cost um, of maintenance and also to look at you know other places where, where that could take place or different ways of addressing this. So... Um, I appreciate this is an issue that I think it's a longer term issue than we can just address tonight. But I wondered if he would be happy that that is something that we are trying to to deal with. I Neil? thank I thank you for your comments, Councillor Co. I acknowledge exactly what you said. My comment to that is this was on the agenda five years ago when I was a councillor, four years ago when I was a councillor. Three years ago, I raised it as a resident. Two years ago, I raised it as a resident. One year ago, I raised it as a resident. And the parish council has done nothing but talk about it. So I don't hold out. I'm not holding my breath that you're going to do anything to get more contribution from the football club. So I will yeah. continue to oh, say about it because I think you are allowing the football club not to make a fair contribution. Okay, Ian. I have empathy with Mr. Brown in what he's saying. I think there's two th uh, two threads to his comments. One is a comment about the state of the pitch, which we can take on board. The other one, though, is a formal complaint about the lack of action from the parish council. And can the chairman rule, please, if that's covered by a complaints procedure? In which case, is a formal process we should invoke tonight. Peter. It is a formal complaint, and we could do it through the complaints procedure, but that brings it to the full council for consideration anyway, Councillor Barrett. So you can, we can have a separate meeting to discuss it, or we can discuss it tonight. I mean, it, it is listed as a, as a written complaint to the, to the parish council. Well, there's procedures, I would have thought, Tom um, um, Clark, there's procedures with a complaints procedure that we couldn't really invoke tonight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's whether it's classified as a stage one complaint or a stage two, really. I mean, it, what we always try to do is resolve uh, complaints as early as possible. And Mr it, Brown it, it, says he's tried to do that with us. Yeah, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if there were formal complaints in the past. I mean, he, he, he certainly put his points over the years, and, I, and, I, and I'm aware of some of them, and some of them were before my time. But... In response to the complaint, we have actually got a mechanism in place now to address the issues uh, that is raised. We've got a group that actually a meeting. We've got a group that are discussing the issues, and we've got a group that now pulling together the information to to, to have an appropriate outcome, which the council can uh, decide upon. Okay, Lynn. All I was going to say was that we we have to have the um, field mode anyway on a regular basis as we do um st david's so uh, really in the past what we've asked for from the football club is is just a, a token contribution because that's the way of subsidizing sport um and activity for across the board in the village which is which is something a, a parish and parish and town councils are um equipped to do That's all. Okay. Has anyone else got any comments? I have. Sorry. Was that you, Neil? Yes. Sorry. I, 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 I'm, 
I can't see your face or anything, so... No, so, sorry, I haven't got my I'm, camera set up for... No, 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 uh, that's okay, so I'm just recogni recognising voices, that's all. Um, no, I'm, um, Councillor Compton's correct. The only thing I would say is that it is not proportionate. If you consider the proportion of the cricket club contribute to the, um, the their land they use in St David's, it's significantly higher percentage of contribution. You might even say it exceeds what they should be uh, uh, contributing. I, the maintenance of the ground is far more than just mowing the ground, mowing the lawn, mowing the grass regularly. There's all the other stuff that goes on and the lack of ability to maintain the ground. If you go over to the Ashway playing field, the grass is becoming gradually thinner and thinner. And every time the parish council or the contractors put seed down, Within a couple of days, the footballs are back over there and the seed just get blown away. Doesn't get chance to take because there's never any time. So it's not just mowing the grass. It is significantly more maintenance that needs to be done. And that, this has been discussed, as I said, for years. I'm quite happy to allow your uniform group to look at it. All I would ask for is that there is a time frame of that something is finalised to it. If the parish council is happy to spend residents' money on a single group and not on the other groups in the village, that's your progress to do. Um, any other comments? Councillor Compton? 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 I agree with the resident. You've actually got to set yourself a time frame because it has been raised. And look, I wouldn't want to get to this situation, but it could be the ultimate will be cricket is played May, June, July and August. Football is played on the other months and not exceeding those other months as well. And no games are played outside of that. And then looking at the costs. But I'm happy to leave it with the working group as long as they actually come back with an answer. Thank you. Ian? I'm still concerned over this formality of the complaint. Our complaints procedure says any formal complaints, of which this is one, that are submitted will be handled by the full council. The council will initially receive and validate the complaint, then nominate three councillors who will not take part in proceedings so they're available to handle any subsequent appeal if required. And it goes on then to say what the, the, the system is to deal with the complaint. We've had a complaint before from the, uh, uh, a member of the public, and that's exactly what we did then. And if while this complaint stays, I think we're, it's incumbent on us to follow that procedure. Now, if Mr Brown wants to withdraw that, then that's fair enough. We don't need to. Peter? I, I just dealt with this stage one complaint to try and clear it up as quickly as possible. Uh, I, I, I can deal it with it formal and have a proper separate council meeting, but it was about uh, being proportionate and I was already uh, in correspondence with uh, the resident on the issue, uh, obviously trying to resolve the complaint earlier, and I've kept him informed of, of what the council were doing, uh, and I've also asked him what he would like to uh, to resolve his complaint, which, which I knew he was going to raise tonight. So my focus was on just resolving it as quickly as possible, rather than... Uh, formalise it into separate meetings and split in the council and whatever, which I'm happy to do. If the council doesn't want to consider it tonight, we can do that. Elaine? Well, I was just going to say, if we can, can we put a review date on this so that we invite Mr Brown back to the meeting with a report at a particular point which to address the complaint that he's made and also to report on the action that we've taken, which I think sort of echoes Councillor Parker's point about putting a, a deadline on it. And that would also make a date for the complaint to go forward to a different meeting if uh, the outcome wasn't what he wanted. Ian? Well, it seems that, as Peter said, the stage one has failed otherwise there would have been a solution by now. The resident is still dissatisfied, not only with the pitch, I'm leaving that in the background, but the procedure we've taken. 
we've got no choice but to follow our own regulations. Otherwise, ultimately, we could be guilty, in, be found guilty in a judicial review, for example, from malpractice. Peter, I don't. I don't think it would come to that. Uh, Hope not. No, I, I don't think it could. That particularly if we've managed to resolve the the complaint this evening. Uh, if Councillor Brown is happy with the outcome that the working group is going to consider in detail and come up with a firm recommendation uh, to revise uh, the current processes, then I would hope that may have satisfied him. But if it doesn't, we could certainly escalate it into the formal complaints procedure. Well, I'm just trying to be practical about it in dealing with it. Because I get complaints all day and every day from various people about street lights, grass cutting, you name it. Uh, it's a matter of splitting out between the more formal ones and uh, the, 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 the informal ones. Most of them I just with deal respect, with on a day-to-day basis. With respect, Peter, you don't get formal written complaints very often. No, I don't. The stage complaints which you very competently deal with. You yes. Uh, can I say something? Yes, Neil. Um, I thank uh, the clerk for elevating my position within the village, but I'm not a councillor anymore. <laughs> Um, Sorry, I didn't know I didn't implied that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, from, my, from my perspective, my, all I would like to do is to get to a point, a position where we have some a clarity on the use and a fair contribution towards the cost and the use. If the, your, the working group, uh, as Councillor Parker proposed, can come up with, can look at the situation within a time frame. I, for me, I am happy to make that no, a couple of months. I'm more than happy because it takes time to work on it and come up with a solution. I am more than happy to, for the sake of pedantics, withdraw the, a formal complaint, provided it doesn't just disappear for another year. What I was going to suggest is that we, the sports liaison um, group have actually got a meeting in um, October. Is it the 20th of October, Peter? That rings a bell, yes, 20th. Yeah. And what I was going to suggest is that this um, complaint um, or observations actually come to, um, come to, that, to that group and, uh, and it is discussed amongst, um, amongst us there. Would you be? Are you? Are you? Would you be happy with that, Neil? Provided there was a clear uh, yeah. date where a dis- some kind of review or decision can be made. Even as I said, if the council decide that my comments and my contributions and my uh, letters, etc., notes, etc., are not relevant, that's your prerogative to make. Um, but what I don't want is that uh, it just disappears into the ether. That's the only thing I don't want. You just want to be want. confident. You just want to be confident that the parish council has taken on board your comments and done and some not just swept them under the carpet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I can assure you that um, um, your your complaint will be addressed at that sports liaison meeting on the twentieth of um, of October. Okay, so just very, very quick, one other point, very, very quickly on this topic, just as, as a sideline why it's there. If the parish council could ask the football club to try and ensure that when the car park at the Ashway is full, the other cars don't park on everybody else's verge, that would be appreciated. Because they okay. are parking all over the verge and it's now getting wet and they're okay. leaving marks. Uh, Peter, could you do me a favour? Could you just uh, make a note... Uh, so that it is uh, put on the agenda for the 20th of October that we will deal with the residents' um, complaint and the issue of um, cars being parked on uh, verges, please. Yes, no problem, yeah. Thank you. Have any... Thank you very uh, much. That's OK, thank you. Anyone else got any comments before we move on to the next agenda item? No. OK, thank you. Right. <laughs> Um, item 15.1, consider a service level agreement for the maintenance of the defibrillator at the Ashway. Mm. Peter? 
Yeah, this is one we, we uh, were gifted a, a defib for the Ashworth changing rooms. It's obviously a critical piece of equipment for the community and for our own peace of mind and reduce any risk whatsoever. Uh, it would probably be better if it was maintained by the uh, responders team who obviously know what they're doing, it, it, things about, and, and they're more likely to use it. And when the pads need changing and the batteries need changing, they would check it on a regular basis and do any maintenance actions uh, as and when required. Uh, we check, we already check it for things like vandalism and graffiti, but in terms of it ever being used on a weekend, we wouldn't know whether it had been used or not. And mm. and basically, they they would know if it had been used, and they would know therefore to change the pads. It's just about yeah. reducing risk. It's it's it's. I wouldn't like the negative publicity if they went to use it no. and something was mm. wrong with it. And I think it's a good way of getting things done for a, a relatively uh, low contribution to the local group. Okay. Is that um, 20 a year? Sorry. Is that uh, £120 a 120 year? £120 a year. Yeah. And they would check it every month to make sure it was all right. And if it was ever used, they'd replace the pads and they'd tell us when the battery was low as well. So we maintain okay. responsibility, um, but they'll keep an eye out on for us. Um, Kevin, do you, mm. if this is going to be um, uh, possibly an annual thing, do you think then we can put something in the budget so that we make sure that, so instead of them uh, maybe um, asking for a donation or asking for a grant for the maintenance of the defibrillator, <laughs> that we can actually just put it in our, put a line in our budget so that we make sure that, that uh, this money is allocated to them or mm. not? Absolutely, Chair, you can do that. Um, no no problems at all. And it it would come back to the, uh, the full council anyway, so you'd mm. see the proposal of yeah. next year's budget, I should say. OK. Jackie? I, I was just thinking, because there's several relations in the village, do we, do we maintain... Well, I know we don't maintain them. Do we uh, cover the cost of maintenance for all of them? No, we don't. The, the the one outside the library, I believe, belongs to EMAS, the ambulance service, and I believe yeah. they'll look after it. Obviously, we look after ours, uh, and I've asked about the village hall, and I, I don't know if I, I don't know who maintains that one. I, Sandra, you may know from the village hall committee. I, I, I've men I mentioned it to Sandra Cottrell, is it, from the responders? Yeah. Who does the village hall? She said she didn't know, so I'm just hoping that's not another gap. Where right, I'm just okay. worried people put them on like, the walls and then forget about them. That's the biggest fear. Yeah, I had a I had a village hall meeting yesterday. Actually, um, yeah. uh, I can write to I can write to Dennis. The defibrillator is never ever raised in in um, in discussion at yeah. all. But I'm 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 wondering whether. I mean, I know where I think I know where you're coming from, Jackie. Um, if we're going to do one, I think we need to do all of them. I, I agree. Uh, and I don't think it's a bad thing for the parish council. Again, it's just a, commun it's a community thing. And I think that maybe we should have a line in the budget to, um, for uh, maintenance costs of these um, defibrillators. And if that's £150 or £120 per defibrillator, then maybe we should be allocating £500 a year for the maintenance of, um, of defibrillators. What 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 do other councillors think? Well, I agree with that, Kevin. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we need to ask James because James is the first responder. I'm trying to think back when I'd have to look at the minutes about the village hall. I thought we contributed, and that was it. it that was the end of it. But I yeah. could be totally wrong on that. Um, and James has said the uh, the one at the uh, community centre is EMAS, which is, again, different. But, I mean, I'd be guided by James, uh, to be absolutely honest. I think James is still with us. James? I'm, I am still with you. I, 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 I must admit, I didn't notice this on the agenda, so although, yeah, when you come to voting, I better not vote. Um, as, far as, as far as I'm aware, the one on the library... I've been told is not EMAS, although they have maintained it. I've, they've, they've, I've been told it's um, count, uh, not County, Daventry. 
or somebody of that direction. Um, but we are, you know, we are willing to uh, maintain these for the, for the community. We don't use them ourselves because we have uh, defibrillators. All the mm. first responders have got a defibrillator of their own, um, which those are maintained and paid for by EMAS. Um, what's any what's any other question on that one? I right. I I think that. Sorry, who was saying? Who was talking? Sorry, chair. Yeah. Uh, I think therefore, if James is unsure about the one, for instance, of the community. We need to understand who's doing what, who owns yeah. what, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the that's the first thing we should be doing on all three of the units. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's almost like, you know, you have like um, um, an, an asset register. It's almost like we need to add these defibrillators to some sort of register, don't we? Peter, is there some... Uh, what, what, what do you think? Well, we've got one defib on the asset register already because that was gifted to the, to the council. But yeah. we need to do a bit of digging on the one with the community centre. I'm sure Mike Nice will know who put it there. Okay. The village hall, we know that we put it there with the grants, but, yeah. but it's in the ownership of the village hall committee. Uh, so that, so that's, I mean, we fact find it first, and then we could decide some sort of maintenance regime after that, I suppose. Mm. I just, I just think that if we, if we're going to donate one hundred and twenty pounds for the maintenance of the one on the Ashway, then it's not going to be so, a surprise um, that the village hall. Com um, yeah, committee turn around and go, well, can we have £120 uh, for hours as well? So I think mm. I think we've got a few things going on here. First of all, we need to find out um, you know, the, the information that, uh, that we just spoke about, who owns what and why and where. And then, um, and then with the proposed budget, I think, it, as I've just said to Kevin, if we have an additional line in there, uh, which obviously will be voted on because it all uh, it's all part of um, the proposed budget for, uh, for for next year. So, Peter, are you okay to do some um, research on those three or four defibs that we've got in the, in yeah. the village? And in the meanwhile, can we sign up to the to the maintenance agreement with with the responders because yeah. they're keen from the first of October to take that one on. Yeah, so that's a proposal, really, isn't that? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, have I got a proposal for um, the service level agreement uh, for the maintenance of the defibrillator at the Ashway? Uh, Jack, Jackie, have I got a seconder? Uh, Lynn, thank, thank you. you. Uh, right. Anyone against? No, any abstentions? Just me. Um, okay, James is abstaining, and so uh, apart from James abstaining, everyone is f is for the service level agreement for the maintenance of the defibrillator at the Ashway. Thank you. Uh, defib. Right. Uh, I. Item 16.1, talking about uh, poking sticks in gullies. So consider if the existing levels of service are appropriate for the parish. Well, this, to me, is a little bit like um, the verges. They used to get, get cut six times a year, then it went down to four to three to none. Um, have, have people got opinions on uh, on? On this, I mean, I think that uh, that they they do not get maintained to a, a, a good standard. But um, Ian, if I asked this to be on the agenda, so I can speak with a little bit of authority on it. It started with an incident on Station Road. Uh, it's in a dreadful state down there. We've got the potholes fixed and one or two other things, but the drains are blocked. There's mm. a real risk to flooding to two of the houses and the dip just beyond the woodyard, and uh, just before the old entrance to the railway station water will flood across the road because there's, there's not one drain that's not blocked from the top of the hill before the village. So it pours across the road. Now, I often come back late along that road at night. And even last year, that water was freezing. It was dangerous. 
cyclists. It can be dangerous to cyclists. The amount of water, your tyres have got to shift. It's awful. Now, I've been in touch, uh, first of all, through Street Doctor, of course, to try and get these fixed. And then it's got it's, it's escalated so far. It's in the hands of Ian Boys at the moment. Now, Ian has said some of these are cleaned once every three years. Now, that may, that may be adequate for some, but I think Station Road certainly isn't adequate, nor is Holcutt. Holcutt Road's always being blocked. And there's no doubt I've got also further complaints with uh, Brampton Way as well. It's another one where the trains have got blocked. I'm wondering, what I'd like to happen is when we think there's danger involved, which I think there is in these three cases, that can they come out and do a one-off for us? Now, Ian says that these um, along Station Road are going to be cleaned out in October or November. Unfortunately, I don't know what year that is. There's a three-year possibility. I've asked him, can you explain? He doesn't know either. He's going to go back to the contractors and ask them, do they know? Well, they've not replied to us. So Peter's been very helpful. And between us, we've looked at the, um, we've got a copy of the list of what gully is being cleaned on what day and what date. Fascinating. Recommend it to anybody. Um, but this isn't on it. So I'm concerned that it's not going to be October 2020. In which case, the poor people of Station Road, they've suffered enough, I think, over the years. We've heard of things not being done despite reminders. Well, this is another example of things not being done without reminders. Um, and I think we should try and press for at least these drains, if no others, on the grounds of safety, to be cleaned, even if it's a one-off. If it is going to be October, we can live with that. There's no, no evidence there is, and it's not on their sheet, to do it in October. Are you with us, Sandra? Yeah, I am. Oh, oh there we are. Yeah, just unfrozen. Yeah. So I have no evidence. Oh, is, is, is Ian frozen now? Oh, oh. So I'm back. Yeah. I think I'm back now, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay. So, so I like Ian, I heard you say me? there is no evidence. Yes, yes there's no, no evidence that it's even on the list to be cleared this year. And we've got the autumn rains coming. So I'd like us to contact um, uh, highways and say, please, on the interests of safety, can you clean those drains as a one-off, even if it's not in your normal routine, because of the dreadful state they're in, Please, can you clean those as a matter of urgency in the interest of safety? If you want to add, if you want to add Holcote Road to that as well, you can do. Yeah, and sorry, that, can I just speak, Sandra? Yeah. Um, there's. I two, just thought Jackie had her hand up. That was oh, all. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Go, go on. Um, there's two as you go up. Um, so past San, Sanco Lane, there's two drains there. They're both absolutely blocked as well, which mm -hmm. would. Um, yeah, affect the flooding of the road. Yeah, well, this is what I mean by, you know, Definitely. Yeah. every time I walk the dogs, I think I've forgotten my stick so I can just poke it, poke it through because that's all that needs no, doing. No, we need a community no. stick poking exercise no. for Jackie. I think, I think it perhaps needs a little bit more than that because we've had similar problems. What, a giant day, plunger? Yeah. Um, I, I, I was just going to ask if if it's not on the list and they won't do it, what is the cost, or do we know what the cost would be to get somebody out to come and do this for us? It is a problem. It is a problem in the shedding game. I'm not even sure if it's just a cost issue. We'd have to talk to Ian Boys about it, but he might actually say. Uh, I mean, I, I remember a few years. Years ago, I I got my I got my mop. I've lost you again. Power mm. uh, Northampton and Spratton Road, and um, you know, I kind of did that off my own back. Um, but I think someone raised it as, "Oh, you shouldn't have done that because that's a health and safety issue." So it might be something as simple as you know. Can we do it or can we get someone else to do it? But highways might very well turn around and go, no, we have to do it because we've got our contractors. But we can certainly, it's a little, as I say, it's a little bit like, um, you know, cutting the verges. If they're not going to do it, let's find out, you know, how much it would cost for us to do it, to, uh, yeah. to do it annually. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we can always put out, put out on, um, on social media, 
is there is uh, you know, have you got a blocked drain in in your street so you could have people down Newlands going absolutely you could have people on Seneca Lane going yes absolutely so um Ian, what, what's your what's your um, what's your proposition then? My proposition you've initially. Been speaking with Ian. Yeah. yeah. Well, initially, my proposition is to support Ian in his trying to find out when they're going to be cleaned. That's the first thing. If it's, mm. if it's October, we can all be happy until the next time. If it's not going to be this coming October, then we want to consider alternatives. And so, as Councillor Moxon's been talking about may be taking it into our own hands just for four or five drains, get a contractor in just to do the worst ones. Because mm. these people, these houses are in danger of flooding. And the ice yeah. on that road is going to be awful. Because the road surface is cracking up as well. Mm. So, can I... Uh, Kevin? Sorry, I was... Uh, um, yeah, well, I, I should support what Ian's saying. Um, if, we, if we've got an issue with water going across roads... That's a safety issue, which NCC are duty bound to do. I don't. I, I wouldn't want to get us getting contractors in, in t which is belongs to the highways. Mm. That's what I'm saying. You know, where does that stop? It, it should stop with NCC. That's where it should stop. And if it's an issue with safety, that's the end of it. They've got to do something. They cannot not do it because it's safe there. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit like, um, you know, overhanging trees on, onto roads. Yeah, they have to deal with it. So, um, Ian, since, you, since you've already started this exercise, mm -hmm. um, can I suggest that you, you carry it on, um, having your conversation with Ian Boys, yeah, and, then bring, hoping... back... yeah. Sorry, and yeah. then bring it back to the next meeting? I was hoping to get a bit more power to my elbow with the support from the council to give a bit harder nudge. I think I think we need a letter from council, a formal letter, formal complaint. Yes, please. Mm. Really? Formal complaint. Should we involve the county councillor or to or copy her in? The officer copy, or the yeah. member route. Copy the uh, member in, definitely. Yeah. Yes, this right, so feels pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I think this is a bit of a proposal. So, Ian, can you um, put the proposal on the table, please? Yes, that we write a letter pointing out the uh, I'm say dangerous, dangerous, perhaps overstating it, the potentially dangerous aspects of the block drains in Station Road, Holcott Road. Let's stick it to those two, and we ask that as a, as a causing, um, yeah, causing potential flooding and danger, and we ask they be cleaned in a matter of urgency. Do you want to mention the fact that in the winter that, um, that it actually freezes over and therefore causes a, a problem with pedestrians and cyclists and well, cars? Because if it turns into black ice. Well, it did last year because I hit it coming back from uh, coming back from moving football. It was usually about one well, o'clock in the morning I get back, and it was frozen solid. That was yeah, last I, year. I think, then it need, I think it needs to be mentioned in the proposal then. Yeah, I have been told this, but needs putting formally to my finger yeah. and copying in yeah. Cecile so she's kept in the loop. Bring her into the loop, and also perhaps Ian's the first person to give to. He seems to be the liaison officer with the. Yeah. Uh, is it Kia who do it? Yeah. Right. Can I ask you to, because I, I cut out of that when you're halfway through your proposal, yeah. do you mind doing it again, please, Ian? Frank, it's hard enough the first time. Right. No, it was, sorry. I'll try. Um, I propose that we write a letter to Ian Boys at Highways, copying in our uh, county councillor, Cecile, expressing our concern over the state of the drains in Station Road, and the 30 mile an hour zone of Holcott Road, pointing out that the complete blockage of these drains is causing a hazard to cyclists especially, and a real danger, we think, of flooding properties. Nothing to do with ice. And black ice in the winter. Yeah, 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 yeah let's do that. It hasn't happened yet, it'll happen again. Yeah. I, I will yeah. add on something about the freezing conditions. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. freezing conditions. That's by the entrance to the old station where the yeah. water goes yeah. across the road. Yeah. I'll second I, that. I, yeah, I, I, can I just say, I would just like to say that actually those aren't the only two areas. And I, I would, um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think we need to identify um, hot spots. So, for example, the end of the end of Newlands, where it puddles there because of the block mm. drains, and as Lynn, as you said, up by um, Sunico Lane is an a, um, is an area. So I think that the proposal needs to almost contain mm. um, the wording of you know uh, of of these um, hotspot areas. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, they might say, "Well, you only mentioned those two roads," and we go, "Yes, but there's this road and this road and this road as well." Mm. Well, could we start with these two, make it a community campaign to find out where all the others are? As you said, well, on the community campaign, where are the rest, please? Bring, yeah, if we bring it to the media, then we can um, we can put um, we can put something out. But I would personally like to add in uh, Seneco Lane and um, and the bottom of Newlands because we know that's a problem. Yes, yeah. as well. Is that okay, Peter? Yes, that's fine. I've got that. Okay, can I have a can I have a seconder, please? Yeah. Lynn? Right. Anyone against? No. Any abstentions? No. I take it everyone is for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Chair, could I just can I just say something, please? Yeah, of course, Kevin. Sorry, I, it's something I should have said back to the emergency planning, which, re yeah. which resulted around the pl uh, the uh, the flooding. Um, what I'd like to do is to contact the people who, des who came up with that map because I can't understand how they know that area is going to flood potentially. So it could be one in a hundred years for all I know. But I'd, mm -hmm. I'd hate them to come back and say it's because some of your drains are blocked, <laughs> if you understand that. <laughs> <it. laughs> so yeah. with the, with the approval... Cool everybody i'd like just to go back and find out why they think certain areas i understand some obviously the river and things like that but there's areas in the village that you would not think would suffer from flooding and they've got to have a reason why they've marked that up so i should have said that i beg your pardon in in point 13 but would, would the council mind if i actually went and found that question out Personally, no. I haven't got a problem. Go forth. I often do. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone happy for Kevin to do that? Yeah. yeah. No objections? Thank you. Uh, right, 17.1, Saxon Rice play area, litter. Right, OK, so consider Parish Council involvement in the ongoing maintenance issue at Saxon Rice. Um, I've got an update on this from yeah. the residents who is on the residents association. If you want to hear that now, yes, please. Um, okay, so an update for you. It, it's Saxon Rise land, which I think Peter would put in anyway. The residents yeah. have to pay for a collection for general rubbish twice monthly, but the bin, which is an open bin, as you know, um, gets full on day four. Um, and builds until residents put dog waste in household waste. It is thought that residents are going to remove bin due to public health. Um, the warden and council not responded to, to the suggestion of a dog waste bin on Northampton Road roundabout, which we're obviously discussing tonight. That's it. That's all I've got from the resident. There aren't any dog... Um waste bins anymore because uh, people can put their dog waste into ordinary bins so you may not have got a response because that's what it is now so i think it's it just not a can i just respond to that point yeah. the litter bins are about three times the price of dog waste bins lots of councils do still install dog waste bins in, in areas where there are dog walkers because the cost of a dog waste bin is about £100, whereas the cost of a, a large covered litter bin is about £400. We've purchased them for 250 and that's why we budget every year for, for our own additional bins and they, they, and they cost um, £250. Uh, I was just wondering, 
is that um, is it just not a matter of putting in another bin? Because clearly one bin isn't um, isn't enough for Saxon rise, is it? Yeah, or, or removing that open bin and putting in a closed bin. Because at the moment you get the pile. I mean, it's literally piled high. Yeah, I with, saw in the photo. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, it's a little bit like the bins on you know, next, you know, opposite the co-op. In that, you know, again, by day four, by the weekend, mm. and certainly by the end of Sunday, they're full because they are simply too small. Mm. Um, well, yeah, yeah. It, but with this it, one, it's the fact that it's open, I think. Yeah. And, well, and think it's we, a health and safety hazard. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think in our own sort of annual review of bins, we, we made a decision that we would be getting rid of the, um, the open bins and replacing them with uh, with the closed bins because Peter mentioned about getting them, you know, with maybe the um, parish council logo or, or whatever um, on them. Uh, I mean, that land is still, I mean, it's obviously brand new and maintained by TCL. Supposedly. But it would have been Barrett's that would have installed that, that bin, wouldn't it? So could, could the management committee not speak with... Um, Barrett's and say, I'm sorry, this this bin is not fit for purpose. We need we need a better bin because it's actually a health and safety risk. It's skanky. It's full of dog feces. They've been trying they've been trying to do that and they've not got anywhere. That's why they've sought the help of the parish council. So what so do they actually uh, want us to purchase them a new bin? I think what they, want? they just they want yeah they want some help or put a bin down so that there's a, it's the issue is because there's all the dog walkers walk through that pathway mm. you could put a bin so that's not our land that that's that belongs to Saxon Rise but you mm. could put a bin at the end of that footpath just before you cross the road And you could, uh, we could petition the mat, the um, Barrett Homes or the management committee. What are they called, Peter? I can't remember. What the Saxon Rise? Yeah, the um, the, the management company. company. That, Is the, it something like Charmony or something? Isn't it something like that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They they've not really responded to the Saxon Rise Residents Association um, on this matter, and they've not been any help at all. But perhaps, um, well, I, I would like to propose that we write to Charmony on behalf of the residents and ask them to sort the issue out and put a better bin in there. And for the parish council to install a bin, obviously we'd have to ask um, Daventry District Council if we could put a bin um, at the end of the footpath. So that would, so walkers coming up the path would be able to put their dog waste or whatever waste they've got, and at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we've installed um, new bins into new areas, there's there's a there's a process that you have to go through, um, so that they um, because they have to agree that they will um, that they will empty it, empty it and exactly. uh, uh, and then we we agree that they don't charge us for uh, for emptying it. Ian. Yeah, the salient point here is this land isn't owned by the council. And these people who live in the Barrett's estate are paying good money for the maintenance of it. And they're not getting mm. their money's worth. No, now, that's something which is perhaps a private contract. And, right, something they've got to sort out themselves, maybe. But in the meantime, I think we should tell, if we're going to write to the company, we should remind them of their responsibilities under the Environmental Protection Act, the, the EPA, 1990 Part 4, which, is, which puts an obligation on landowners to clear the muck up. And if they don't, we'll do it for them and charge them. Yeah, I agree. I with think you. we should be as blunt. I'm sure absolutely as blunt as that, and say, do what you're doing. Yeah. You're being paid for it, and those people deserve to get what they're paid for. Yeah, uh, absolutely, uh, Councillor Barrett. Um, so, is that a proposal? Well, is that? I mean, is it? Is it the responsibility? I'm not being horrid here. Is it the responsibility of the parish council to write that letter, or can we simply guide them in the direction of you? you uh, 
um, this is the type of letter that you should be writing that you should be writing for example environmental health you should actually um, also copy in the environmental health officer at Daventry do, do, do you know what I mean so um, I, I do I do know what you mean but we've been asked by a resident who's who's asked on behalf of the residents association because they have tried everything they are literally at their wits end and they were going to they were going to rip out the bin that, so that I, I, we're just supporting our residents, I, I guess. I, I've already written twice to to the management company, and I get an acknowledgement back saying they've passed it on to the next person, and I never hear anything back. So that's mm. two, two, two two emails I've sent through already without any any luck really. Okay. Stuart? And I've mentioned to them if they increase the frequency or increase the size of the bin, then they yeah. wouldn't have an issue. Yeah. But yeah. they just haven't come back. Sandra, this isn't the only issue the residents have faced. There's been multiple issues, and I, I actually agree with Ian. I think a more forceful approach needs to be taken, and I think we need to lead on that. Okay. The, the residents have come to us out of sheer desperation, Absolutely. and we need to support. Um, so I think we escalate as far as we possibly can, and, and you know, as Ian has said, remind them of their statutory obligations around this. Yeah. Right, and I think if we do a letter, we need to copy in environmental health. I think, yeah, yeah I and, think you, you and yeah, you do. Else. Yeah, you copy in the CEO of of Barrett Homes and mm. and TCL and 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 whoever. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, Lynn, you had a proposal. Oh, well, I think Councillor Barrett actually had the proposal, and <laughs> I I was going to second him because he put it very eloquently. <laughs> I don't think I'll do it again like last time. Um, yeah, I propose then that we contact the, I don't know if you call them the land agent, who the, the firm is responsible. Who are they? Charmander. TCL. Yeah. That's the one, yeah. Well, we, we so, write... so T TCL then, do they just do the mowing? Yeah. Mm. Are they the responsible? I mean, who actually gets paid by these people to do the job for them? Who? Where's the service charge? Goes? That's who we really need to get hold of, the service charge. Not the contractor necessarily comes around and does it, but the service company. Charmian. You know, yeah, that's the one. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. So if we would wrote to those people and uh, expressing our dissatisfaction with the um, litter and detrius, if that's the right word, on the playing field and the, the slow speed it's taking to, um, to clear it up and... Can't put it in words. Sorry, um, it's getting late, isn't it? I think we need is. to mention the um, the, the health hazard uh, to um, yeah to children because if it's in the play area, then it's going to be children. Perhaps we could be even blunt. Just say we don't believe that we, we understand they're responsible for the cleanliness of that playing field area, yeah. and we believe they're failing under the DOT under the Environmental Protection Act. I can I can yeah. find out the exact section. I think it's section eighty nine, but I can. I can find out the section. Yeah. And uh, please, can they comply with that? Otherwise, they will leave themselves open to other, other, um, it being cleaned and then being billed for the um, for the work. Yeah. That's that rather unethically. That's what, yeah, that's what I propose. And I'll second that. Peter, did you manage to get that? Yes, I've got all that, and I'll, I'll rejig it slightly, but yes, it'll put the... I've got just more than slightly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> few commas. Uh, <laughs> can right. you copy oh, in Daventry as well? Can you copy in Daventry District Council Environmental Services? Yes, certainly. Oh, yes. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Have I have I got any objections? Any abstentions? Right. So all in favour? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. So part two for information only, 19 point rights. Peter, you had a suggestion earlier, didn't you? Sorry, we haven't done the website accessibility statement. Oh, uh, oh sorry, I skipped 18. that one. Okay. Yeah, so 18.1, consider the Parish Council's website accessibility statement. Has everyone read that? This is, this is just a legal requirement. Yeah, uh, yeah it, looked, it looked fine. It's yeah. um, a temp. It's, Peter hasn't made this up. It's a um, something that's a template. 
That's right. We, we've had a full audit of our website, well, yeah. a sample yeah. audit of the website, and yeah. we've since had accessibility button put on the website where it can read read the text to you. It can give you contrasting backgrounds. It can increase the space in between the words. So basically, we're up to date with current standards and expectations. Yeah. Okay. So we need to have a proposal on accepting this, then, don't we? Yes, we do. Thanks, Chair. Yes. Yeah. I don't mind. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Lynn. Can I have a seconder, oh, I've Jackie? Seconded. Thank you, okay. Bird, yeah. Anyone against? Any abstentions? All in favour? Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Peter, you had a suggestion about the next. Well, I was just saying, with them all being information items, unless anyone's got any questions or yeah. comments, that we'll just take them on block, items 19 to 25. So 19.1.2.3 is finance. So we've got um, the rolling budget, the re reconcil reconciliation report and the parish council's reserves. Has anyone got any comments about that for those? No? No. 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 So I, can I propose that we receive um, all, um, all three, 19.1.2 and point three? Yeah. Have I got a seconder? We don't. We don't need it. They're all information items, <laughs> chair. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm absolutely sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Right. Community safety. Um, note that the reported crime data for Bricksworth in July, and note the data downloaded from the speed indicator device. We normally have a bit of a chit chat. Has anyone got any um, comments about either of those? Councillor Coe has got his hand up. Can't see. Oh, yes, okay, uh, Stuart? Sorry, I oh, just didn't lower it. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, um, no no comments. Thank you. So, that's noted. Planning, 21.1.2.3. Received the planning decisions of August 2020. Received the minutes of the planning committee of the 3rd of August and received the minutes of the planning committee of the 24th of August. 2020. Are we all happy to receive those? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Media and Communications 22.1 received the minutes of the Media and Communications Committee of the 8th of July 2020. Happy to receive those? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Parish Clerk's report. I, I don't want to skip over this. I do think it's important that we do read the parish clerk's report. Do you mind just pulling it up and putting it on the screen? Yeah, please, that's what Peter? I'm doing now. I'll just... Um, Thank you. Do, 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 do. Oh, there we are. Couldn't find it. Right. Ah, uh, um, Peter, I now have a draft legal document for our, uh, from our solicitor. When I had the meeting with the village hall yesterday, yes, uh, Dennis said that it said license rather than said license rather in, than lease instead of rather than lease, and he wondered if that was a mistake. I don't think it is. I, I would have thought the solicitor would know what's best. Okay. Perhaps we need. Perhaps we need to discuss. Perhaps. Can you and I discuss that um, over the next few days? Yes, please. Yeah, we can discuss that offline. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Right. Uh, assets broken slab. Fully repaired. Right. Okay. S service requests. Okay. Meetings attended. Da, 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 da. Carry on going down. Training and development, community engagement. And that's it, really. And then there's a breakdown of the priorities. And then... Oh, can we uh, just have a look at your priorities, please, Yeah, there's, there's probably a few to be added in there. I was going to update it anyway, Chair, so we can uh, work out what's important and what isn't, because there's some things yeah. that have come in since, like, the Olcott Road project. Yeah. Uh, I th and there's a, there's a few other bits that need, need adding to it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see um, new assistant clerk move from priority three to priority one. 
Yeah, um, well, well that's, the, I've put that as task with a deadline. And if you remember, we agreed the deadlines at uh, personnel yeah. committee, personnel working yeah. group. So yeah. that that advert's going out this weekend. Uh, that's great. Now we've approved the salary, the job description, and the person spec. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's pop. Carry on going down. And then it's just a just a review. A lot of the time yeah. it's based on council meeting actions and what's well, mainly the actions yeah. and the minutes, whatever. Personnel's higher yeah. this month with all, all that peninsula work. Yeah. And then planning grants. Uh, that's probably just just work with the recent grants I've gone through with the food. And then finance is self-explanatory. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Right. And then the community said is obviously quite high as well with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. With the COVID issues. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, do any councillors have any comments about the clerk's report? No. Yes. 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 Sorry. Okay. Sorry. You're on the screen now, um, Ian. <laughs> Very briefly, I would endorse what the chair has said this evening that Peter must get himself an assistant. I've told him privately, now I'm telling him in public. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. He needs help. He, yeah. we, we, we flog him to within an inch of his life. It's about time he got a bit of respite from yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Please get one. Mm. Yes. Okay, Dokes. So, um, so uh, Clark's report received. Uh, general co general correspondence twenty four point one. Note the correspondence listed in Appendix C one. Okay, noted. And date of future meetings. Planning fifth of October. Media fourteenth of October. Planning again twenty sixth of October. Full council twenty ninth of October. We don't really need to mention the sports liaison stuff in this no in, no in the, all the working groups no. Are, are, are yeah no that's absolutely fine advertised. are we happy not to mention working group meeting dates yeah 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 okay right part three confidential to consider the exclusion of the press and public i'm not aware of anything peter no uh sorry we've got the village hall item to to discuss in private session which is the draft license oh yeah Okay. So I just need a proposal and a second to yeah. exclude the press and public, yeah. even okay. though there's so nobody in I, the room at the moment. Yeah. Can I propose that we exclude the press and the public from um, agenda items um, twenty-seven point one and twenty-seven point two, please? Can I have a seconder? Lynn, thank you very much. Anyone object to that? Peter, there were no proposals for legal matters 27.1 and 27.2. But just to clarify, 27.1, uh, the councils agreed that would be deferred to the uh, the working group that's looking at the same yeah. David's agreement. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And 27.2 is that we've just received legal updates and that was it. Yes, yeah. Okay. Right. 28, urgent matters report only. I haven't received anything. No, I haven't, Chair. Sure. That's it. Right. Good night, everyone. Dead on time, thank you. Okay. Bye.